talking about what is collaborative leadership and the seven qualities of a collaborative leader. It was great being able to interact with the four H American teens and seeing their perspective and their way of doing things. The main focus of this morning's sort of session was the difference between collaborative and cooperative leadership and the sort of benefits and disadvantages of both and when to apply uh, which leadership style and how to basically get the best out of it. So it was really, really interesting. It was really hands-on. So you're really dealing with uh, people within the PH International U Lead group and the 4H teens and seeing just different points of view and meeting new people and finding out about different cultures while it's also learning things that you can apply to say a business setting or a political setting. So it's been fantastic. Leadership can be applied in any situation and it's not always what you think. So it's not rushing in and shouting and trying to get your opinions heard above others. It's listening to everyone and taking everyone's opinion on board and following the times and taking the lead in certain times and just making sure everyone works together to try and collaborate and get that best, the best result possible. So I think that can be applied to any situation. See, so one thing I'd really like to write Vermont, well, apart from the weather, obviously, I've probably burnt already, but um, the people, the people are all really friendly and really um, just nice to get along with. I mean, wherever we've been or wherever we've gone, people have always just been that accepting and happy and bright, and we're not used to that back in Ireland. <laughs> Working with kids from a different country and culture was amazing. I learned like how similar our cultures are in some ways and how different and just how um, no matter where you are in the world there are going to be people that are somewhat the same as you. I hope I kind of broke the stereotype of like the American blonde, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, why do you think that's important? Because not all blondes are really dumb and shallow. Like, there's more to Americans than what is portrayed on TV, I guess. <laughs> so it feels like a well-oiled machine. It's true. Who wrote that one? I've never really met many people from outside of America, so just meeting them, talking to them about their traditions and customs has been a great experience. And then on top of that, we're doing leadership projects. So we're doing some different activities. Some, we did an icebreaker. It was great to get to know everyone. And then it kind of showed our leadership ideas compared to their ideas and where things that we do are similar compared to things they do. My communication skills in 4-H definitely helped me in a situation like this, you know, talking to different varieties of people from different areas. For example, when we go to show horses in Springfield at the Big E, we're exposed to people from the city that know very little about horses versus the people in Vermont that have some horse knowledge. So I really didn't know what to expect meeting these kids from the UK, and I just was very interested. Um, meeting them, I was very surprised with a lot of similarity, just different things we do in our free time, favorite foods, things like that, just a lot of similarities. I was able to communicate with them very easily. I wasn't sure if they'd have an accent, wouldn't be able to stand, but they talk very well. And I was under, able to understand them very easily. Everyone over here is very nice to each other. So if you if you walk in the street in London and someone says hello, you'd normally walk past really fast and like hide your phone. Whereas over here, everyone else is saying hi to each other, and it's it's really nice and different. And I think that's important because most people would assume that English and American culture is very similar because it's both Western, but it's more fun picking up the the, dif the differences. So we went to the cinema, and I found out that Americans put butter on their popcorn, and we don't do that at home, and it's really weird. And I don't really understand. It, but it's cool learning different things like that. Yeah, I think in all the other experiences we've been doing, it's more so about individual, um, like pro, like an individual process, being a leader on your own. Whereas this one has kind of shown us that it's more important to work together and to be collaborative, opposed to getting to an end goal by yourself. It, it makes more sense to do it with other people. The biggest thing that I've learned is that you don't necessarily need to live in a big city environment to kind of to survive because I've never had to live outside of that environment and being here and seeing these people that just the, the way of life is amazing and so inspiring whereas like back home it's I live in like like London and it's where everything's happening everything's really fast and you're always on your way to do something but over here it's just you can kind of pace yourself and enjoy like the, the scenery and enjoy just chilling out and I really like that and definitely will employ that when I get back home. 
I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say that this is like the country, but it's just definitely a simpler and more relaxed way of living that I think is really cool, and I like it.